So um, Vinny has two inches or more than two inches of hair on the sides. And you can tell that by taking your um, eight guard comb, which is one inch of hair. And if it has hair that's left over, you can tell, all right, that's longer than one inch, which means you can cut it on the state board. So if you don't know if your model has long enough hair, take an eight, which leaves one inch of hair on the side if you use it to cut. And if there's any leftover, like a lot like this, it'll show that it's closer to two inches of hair. So, but on the state test, you can only have your clipper of your choice. I have a corded wall senior. Um, and a one clipper guard or shorter. So I have my one and my half guard. You're only allowed to do these two. You cannot bring your one and a half white guard. The first thing that you have to do on the state test after you set up your station is taper your client's neckline with your one. So I'm going in with my all purpose comb and my one guard and you cannot talk to your client at all. There's no speaking. So beforehand I recommend doing a practice run and if your client's head is straight up, just push forward. Don't try to taper with a client's head straight up because the C motion will catch a lot of the hair. You wanna lean your client's head forward a little bit, whether it's a mannequin or a human client. So I'm gonna start with the one guard with the adjustment lever down, which is a one and a half as it opens the blade. I'm going to scoop. Home. Keeping in mind that you need to take this weight line out with a clipper over comb technique, I want to raise it up a little bit so it's easy for me to grab. Normally in real life, you can make a sharp line right here with your T outliner, but for the test, you can't have a T outliner, so that's why I brought my half guard to taper that hair nice and tight so when we leave the examination room, it looks like a normal society approved haircut. Now the next step is to take your clipper over comb technique to taper out that natural weight line that you just made. Now, New York State says that you can keep your clipper guard on while you do this. If you're not too comfortable with the clipper over comb technique, the clipper guard gives you a little bit more space and protection to work with, so you're not cutting everything off. You're cutting a one guard's length away from the surface of the comb instead of oops, a bare guard's length. This is now considered unsanitary. If I were to do that in the test, I could no longer use this, but for right now, I'm gonna put it back on. I'm gonna keep my clipper guard on as I would recommend you do this. And you are clipper over comb blending right here. I don't see that it is taking off enough hair. So I'm gonna close that blade so now it's a true one from the surface of the comb. Clipper over comb technique isn't one singular movement. You have to adjust how you hold the comb. You are just tapering clipper over comb between the nape and the occipital bone. If you go up higher than that, you go into the range of hair that they want to see using finger over shear and shear over comb. So don't go above your ears right here with clip over comb. If you go too short and risk having a hole in the haircut, you have to be able to blend it out, which you may not be able to do. You may not have enough experience problem solving on clients, and you don't want your first experience of problem solving to be on your state test. Notice I'm resetting my comb each time I do a pass with the clipper. I don't just keep it here. This is what the back of your haircut should look like after you blend out that weight line. I did clipper over comb from the occipital bone down. Okay, after you have clipper over comb technique, blended the back from the occipital bone to the nape, you are going to use that same clipper over comb technique 
to blend from the sideburns to the temple. For this, I'm gonna take my half guard. I've now removed the one guard from the clipper. I'm still not doing a bare blade because if I make a mistake, it is way too close to the comb if I had no guard on this. So having a guard at all times gives me a little bit of insurance and reassurance that I won't make a hole in the haircut. So for video purposes, I'm facing the camera, but normally I would be sitting right here. So I'm going to put my adjustment lever down to open my blade to give me a little bit more space. And I start here. I'm finding that I'm not cutting as much hair as I want to with this guard on. So I'm gonna to decide to take it off. So now I'm gonna do that on the opposite side. Okay, so his sideburns have now been blended with scissor over comb, I mean, sorry, clipper over comb. And the next service after this is a shampoo. And after that is the 14 stroke shave where you would give him a sideburn. So don't get freaked out that this isn't short enough. You will make that sideburn line with your razor in sections one and seven of the shave. So don't worry about it. The next is to do a uniform haircut, removing at least a half an inch from the top and the parietal ridge right here to blend in what you did with clipper over comb to the top. So what you have to do first is saturate the hair. Take your normal hair cutting shear. You cannot have a thinning shear on the exam and begin cutting the top section first, then moving on to the sides. The sides you can do shear over comb or finger and shear method. I will show you both. When the New York State Procedures states you must perform a uniform haircut, that means that the layers and the angle at which you are holding the hair must be uniform. So you are holding the hair up at a 90 degree angle and you are creating and using a traveling guideline. I'm gonna turn for the purposes of this video. I would use the shear over finger method right here to cut the sides, connecting the shear, uh, to connecting the clipper over comb sections to the shear sections. On the opposite side, I will show you scissor over comb. You're using your shears above the occipital bone, which is where you needed to stop when you were doing clipper over comb. Because you were using a traveling guideline and pulling the hair out 90 degrees from where its point of origin is to cut it. So, this side is complete. For purposes of the video, I'm going to turn towards you and show you how I would use shear over comb. You could arch your body and cut like this, but if they're watching your posture, I would rather you stand in an, not an awkward reaching position and switch it up. In this area and above the ears is where I'm going to do shear over comb. This purple shear is a right-handed shear. If I were to use my left-handed shear in my right hand, it would not cut the hair. I am going to grab the hair right here because it's technically above the occipital bone, but I didn't grab it with my clipper over comb because I was instructed to cut just from the sideburns to your temple bone. I'm getting a little bit too close to the occipital bone, so I don't wanna mess around here too much in case they are watching very, very intently, but for purposes of Vinny leaving and re-entering society after we leave the exam, I do wanna make that blend nice and even. 
as I would in a normal barbershop. Don't rely too heavily on thinning shears before you take this test because you cannot bring them on the test. The next step you must do is a shear arching technique around the ears. Normally and in real life, you would take a T-outliner to cut these hairs, but because when this exam was created, T-outliners were not commonly used, you had to demonstrate the skill of shear arching. It's recommended that you use a comb. You don't have to, but it makes it a lot cleaner. You will be shaving here with a straight edge razor, so don't be too concerned right there. You are just worried about the hair here. This will be a difficult spot, so just go slowly and be intentional with your movement so you do not cut or scratch your client. Just like with a T-outliner, one side will feel less awkward than the other. Now again, you are going to be shaving this with a razor, so don't panic if you see bits that are uneven, like I'm looking at right now. The best thing to do is to just get most of it out of the way. You do have to start traveling this way, but that's when my left-handed scissor comes in handy. If you do have it, now you can switch. There's benefits to being ambidextrous. After you have done clipper over comb, shear over comb, and shear arching, you have to remove the hair clippings from your client. And New York State tests, it is illegal to go in with a neck duster. So you have to create a mitt with a PSD towel, like so, and put your talcum powder on this. This is considered a single use step so realistically you can't sanitize a neck duster so this is a more sanitary way to do it both of these are now put into your garbage bag that should be taped to your station okay end of the video Okay, so after you've completed what is required for the physical hair cutting part, you are redraping correctly, but this time you are including towels because a razor is going to be used to make your outline. So I recommend a single use can and you are applying like so. Okay, so to follow your client's sideburn region, you want to use the point of your razor Now you have to do reverse backhand. To remove the hair from your client. This position feels extremely unnatural and for purposes of the video, I'm facing you. So you can see my position. I will be moving my razor this way. When you're done with this step, close your razor, place it on your PSD towel, and roll up the towels you just used. But if you see excess, you must wipe it off. Yeah. 
same thing. You can't see the talcum powder. Obviously, don't do this because this is unsanitary. But I've done too much. I'm going to include a video on how to do a better hand towel. Undrape your client. Using talcum powder. Lastly, you do the chair. Do not put it back on him after you do the chair and the cake. And that is your skateboard haircut section.